So we're going to have the Lee University Symphonic, Symphonic Band here. So They are a 60-member band. So this whole front stage is probably going to be swamped. So I would recommend um, inviting somebody to come out with you that night. Let's fill this place up. This Thursday and then the next Sunday night, we're going to have a really good time in the Lord. It'll be a totally different kind of service next Sunday night, but I'm looking forward to totally different. I like that. So please come and let's just sit down and let's listen to some awesome music. Amen. Let's stand, please. shows up Thursday, tell them that I'm an awesome pastor, I'm amazing, the best you've ever had, always speaks enlightening messages, whatever, just butter me up, can you do that, anybody in for that, okay, I'm sure there will be an altar call afterwards, just invite some folks out. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful to be in your house again today, God. Thankful for a beautiful day. Thankful for your spirit. Thankful for your blessings, God. Father, move mightily in this service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing if you can. Amen. Have you come ready to worship this morning? Have you entered his gates with thanksgiving in your heart? Have you come ready to praise? Huh? Well, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his Oh, I will say the same thing that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for Him. Oh, come on now. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for Him. Before I said the angel. 
bow before Him. Oh, the angels, angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth, but, oh, it's what a mighty God we serve. And He's so mighty that nothing is impossible with our God.
Cause it's you who gives me strength Say nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible Nothing is impossible Nothing is impossible our God this morning. I keep forgetting to do this, but if you want to come out and worship up front, you're more than welcome in any service if you feel led to get out of your seat and come up here and worship. Because that's what this is about. It's not about us up here. It's not about me. It's not even about you. It's about Him this morning. And sometimes you just don't need to look at the person around you, but you want to get in the altar and just praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. That's what this is about this morning because he's our God. And if he can change water into wine, what more can he do for you and I this morning? Because nothing's impossible with him. Oh, bless his name. I feel him this morning. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Well, into the darkness you shine calls out of the ashes you rise there's no one like oh there's none like you cause he's our God our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than oh I believe that our God is healer he's awesome in power our God oh, sing that again come on I said our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than me I said our God is healer also in power our God our God back to the first verse of these guys oh what are you turned into wine well what are you turned into wine well you opened the eyes of the blind there's no one like oh there's no one like our God Oh, and into the darkness you shine. Into the darkness you shine. Rolls out of the ashes. Out of the ashes we rise. Oh, there's no one like you. Oh, bless His holy name. None like you. Come on, man, let me hear you. I said, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God. Come on, lift your hands and give Him some praise. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we exalt you this morning. You are God Almighty. We trust you and we love you, God, this morning. Bless your holy and wonderful and matchless name. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what? Oh, I said. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand? Nothing can stand against our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than it. Oh, I said, our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God, oh, I know I said, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than it. Hallelujah. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God, come on now. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we extol you and we lift you, God, high and high. Oh, we bless you. Hallelujah. No one greater than our God. And if 
if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, bring the music way down guys, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us, and if our God is with us, then what could stand, come on, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us, and if our God is with us, then come on if our God and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, one more time, come on. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? What can stand? Oh, cause He's our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Hallelujah. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Oh, one more time I said, well, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him some real praise. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we're thankful for your name. Lord, you're great and greatly to be praised this morning. You can be seated if you like. Awesome job, team. Awesome job of worship, church. Praise his holy name. and offerings. It is a little bit long, but I think it has a really good message, and I hope it grabs you like it did me. It's called The Rich Man, man and the Poor Man. There once was a very rich man. He was so rich, he could have owned many cars, but instead he chose to drive a Ford. He was so rich, he could have owned many computers, but instead he chose an Apple Macintosh. He was so rich, he could have owned many homes, even some in Beverly Hills, but instead he chose to live in East LA. Because this man was rich, many people in his neighborhood knew him. And also because the man was rich, many people from outside of his neighborhood knew him too. Often his doorbell would ring and there on his threshold would stand someone who had come to ask for a donation. Sometimes when the bell rang, it was a neighbor who had fallen into misfortune. The man would smile embrace his neighbor, neighbor and place a generous sum into their hand. Sometimes when the bell rang, it was a charity representing the starving children of Tijuana. The man would again smile, embrace the charity worker, and write a generous check. Sometimes when the bell rang, it was a Jehovah's Witness. Were he like many of us, the man's first instinct would have been to promptly kick them in the rear and shove them back out onto the street. But instead, he once more smiled and embraced the Jehovah's Witness as any other guest upon his threshold. One evening when his doorbell was particularly quiet, this man decided to take a stroll. He headed off, idling along wherever the road wound amongst the quaint homes of his neighborhood, past the threadbare trees lining the park, along the walls painted with an array of colorful graffiti tags. Remember, this was East LA. Every once in a while, a car passed, thumping out the latest rage and rap hit, and soon he found himself whistling one of these catchy tunes. Lost in the tune, he suddenly came upon a homeless bum lying in the midst of the sidewalk. The bum wore a tattered sweater and ripped pants. He had shoes, but they didn't even match. And oh, the smell. I can't even describe to you here that because it would ruin your day. Well, this unfortunate soul lying on the street saw the man and knew him. Certainly, the bum said to himself, this is the rich man who lives on the lane. Surely he can help me, for he has money at his disposal. But instead of reaching out his hand, 
the bomb was overcome by a sudden bout of shame and hid his face. The man stood over this tattered figure. He reached down and touched the bum's cheek, but the bum shrank away from him even further. The man's eyes clouded slightly and he cracked a weak smile. Forgetting the tune he once whistled, the man slowly turned and walked back to his home. Upon hearing the man retreat beyond the corner, the bum opened his eyes and sat up. There at his feet lay a crisp $100 bill. The bum grabbed the money and made a beeline for the nearest 7-Eleven. Like all bums, this one's, first, this one's first thought was to go blow the money on vodka. What a bum. But before he entered the store, he remembered the compassion of the man's touch. This inspired him, and the bum decided then and there to turn his life around. The bum promptly bummed two dimes off of an old lady. Payphones don't take $100 bills. Well, the lady replied, you ain't going to spend this on alcohol, are you? The bum shook his head and stuck the money into the slot of the nearest telephone. His broker answered, and the bum said, $100, invest it all in that company with the nerdy-looking CEO, Microsoft. Since this was, as it turns out, the late 1980s, it took only a short while before the stock skyrocketed. Yes, good can come of evil after all, especially when you're working in the stock market. And the bum found himself very well off indeed. Back in East LA, the years slowly passed. The generous man kept to his life as much as usual, taking strolls and answering his door. One day in particular, the doorbell rang, and there stood a finely dressed gentleman in a three-piece suit. Uh-oh, the man thought, another Jehovah's Witness. But before he could do anything, his guest spoke. You're the rich man, aren't you? His guest asked. What can I do for you? The man responded automatically, so accustomed to being asked for things. It is not what you can do for me, his guest answered, but what you have already done. What have I done for you? The old man asked. You've given me a second chance at life. Why, with your generous $100 gift, I was able to invest the money and pull myself out of poverty. I no longer wallow in the grime and gutters, but I walk along crowded sidewalks with my head held high. I have you to thank for that. Suddenly, the man recognized his guest as the old bum that he had helped so many years ago. What I gave you, you did not ask for. I gave it simply because I saw you there and loved you. I would have given it to anyone in your position. His guest replied, all the more reason to come and thank you. But I am rich, replied the man. I have many gifts to give. I don't expect anything in return. Good, his guest said with a nod, because I don't have anything to offer in return. All I wanted to do was come and thank you. The man stared at his guest, reached out, and took him into an embrace. It was the same gesture the man had so often offered to those at his door, yet this was the first time someone had offered it back to him. The man, tears filled the man's eyes as his guest, a lowly bum off the street, held him in the most satisfying embrace he had ever received. I think the story really touched me because, um, you know, you never know what your kindness is going to do for somebody else. And I think we just need to um, meditate on the story and ask God to help us apply the same attitude in our lives toward others. And with that, it's time to take up our tithes and offerings. And Jessica, can you pray over the offering, please? smiling on the outside but she's hurting on the inside it's getting hard just living anymore and the shadow she has clung to painful memories she has been through has left her feeling worthless Lord 
But you change worthless into precious Guilty to forgiven Hungry and dissatisfied Empty and a fool And all the lies are shattered And we believe we matter When you change broken into I do, I wanted to read this scripture. Romans 8 and 26. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. I just uh, like everyone to try and focus this morning um, on the Holy Spirit. Again, don't focus on me because this is just something I do. It's my way of expressing my love to God. So uh, just worship and praise God this morning and, you know, invite the Holy Spirit into this place. Your presence, Lord. 
Dr. Sterling's church, go ahead and go on back. Mom, come on up. This, this sanctuary for the Lord to dwell in that he's here whether we acknowledge that or not and that's just it he's here but have we acknowledged that he's here people can come in and out of our house but if we never acknowledge that they're there then we think, well, then they're not there, right? If I don't acknowledge you, then you're really not there. And that's not the way it works. They're there whether you acknowledge them or not. But you know what? I think that proper protocol to acknowledge, for example, if a head of state walked in or an ambassador from another country or the United States president walked in or some king from another country that our protocol would be to acknowledge them we wouldn't want to ignore them and i think one of the uh the nicest ways to acknowledge someone now you know it's embarrassing sometimes to us to be acknowledged this way especially if we're not expecting it is people start clapping their hands we kind of did that to in our ladies meeting last month um we just kind of like had a little running joke and we said everybody women that walk in after we've started we're going to clap our hands for them and of course when they came in they're just like oh why is everybody clapping because i'm you know um but you know i i think it, it would be fitting to acknowledge the holy spirit by just giving him the best hand clap that you can give him amen amen That's even better, man. Stand it. Body. He took 
touched my mind. He saved me and it was just in time. I'm going to praise his name. You say he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord the good Lord. Amen. Are you happy to be here today? Amen. It's good to see the Hoffman family out this morning. They've had a busy, trying, stressful weekend, and I am appreciative that they're in God's house this morning, because it could have been really easy to just stay home. Amen. But they're here. I commend them for that. Amen. The Lord's been messing with me this weekend. Has anybody ever have that happen to you before? Okay. Basically, all I have is verses this morning. Amen. So pray for me. Luke chapter 11 is where I would like to go in the scriptures. And I'm going to read verses 21 and 22. Luke chapter 11, verses 21 and 22. The Bible says, for when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe. i read that one more time before we go to the next one. Go back. For when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe. Next verse. Until... Someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him, strips him of his weapons, and carries off his belongings. Can I read that one more time? Until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him, strips him of his weapons, and carries off his belongings. Leave that up, Clayton. Will you pray for me right now? Pray with me. Father, we are so appreciative of your spirit, God. I'm appreciative of what I feel in my soul this morning, God. Father, help me, God, to bring out what I think you're wanting me to bring out right now, Lord. Father, you know the individuals that are here. You know their hearts. You know their struggles, God. You know what they're dealing with, God. You know how powerful the enemy is over your children at times, Lord. Father God, show them what your word says, God. Show them what you're capable of doing during these times. And Father, we'll praise you for all things. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Give him a big hand clap, please. Sometimes it's really easy to put messages together, and sometimes the Lord just gives you a verse or two. And you've heard me say that in the past. And as I'm reading these verses here, something really just jumps out at me when I'm reading here in chapter 11. When you get into verse starting at 14, you start to realize that Jesus is doing things that he was meant to do. And because he was doing things that he was meant to do, he is starting to feel opposition he is starting to feel pressure from the people around him. And Jesus, being who he is, every time he was presented with opposition or every time he was presented with an issue, Jesus immediately went to work. Jesus never cowered away. Jesus never backed down. He never ran in the other direction. Jesus always faced the opposition. Starting here in verse 14 of chapter 11, we read where Jesus has cast the demon out of a man who couldn't speak. And when Jesus cast this demon out of the man, he immediately is attacked. 
by the people standing around him, telling Jesus that the only reason he is capable of casting out these demons is because Jesus himself gains his power from Satan. The only way, Jesus, that you're able to call out these demonic spirits is because you're in line with Satan. Satan gives you power. Jesus immediately responds and says something like, you know, if I were of Satan and I'm casting out my demons from people, there's something called a civil war that's taking place in Satan's kingdom. And if Satan's kingdom is at civil war, if it's fighting with itself, then how in the world is it possible that it's going to stand? Jesus goes on to say, I do not gain my power from Satan, but I gain my power from God. I gain my power from my Father, which is in heaven. And I'm not sure why this is hitting me right now, but it is. I don't gain my power from the things that you see, and I don't gain my power from this world. I gain my power from my Father, which is in heaven. You know, I believe that the world wants to tell us that our power lies within the things that we can lay our hands on. The world wants us to believe that our power is in the things that we see and the things that we learn from the universities, if you will, from the paychecks that we receive on a weekly basis. That's where our power is. Can I tell you, you do gain knowledge from the universities, knowledge that is useful in this life. You do gain some sort of power from your weekly paycheck, but you and I know that that weekly paycheck is limited and what it's capable of doing. You and I should be knowing that in Jesus Christ, through the Father, that our power, there is a power that far exceeds any power that is in this earth. Amen. This power is something that even if there isn't a paycheck every week, there is still a God who is looking after you and I. Somebody say amen. Even if there isn't an education or something that we can boast about, there is still a God that you and I can rely on that will give us a knowledge, that will give us an ability that we need to deal and cope in this life. Amen. Jesus goes on here in verse 21 and he acknowledges something about our enemy. He acknowledges that our enemy is a strong man. For when a strong man, like Satan, and I like this, he is fully armed. How many of you know that Satan can be fully armed? He can be fully armed against you. Somebody say amen. Amen. Pastor, how is it possible that the enemy can be fully armed? I believe that sometimes you and I give him the weapons he needs to defeat us. You and I say the things, and I know I've said this before, you and I say the things that help him in defeating us. You and I act and behave in certain ways that help him defeat us. When we should be having faith, when we should be having trust in the Father, are we moaning and groaning and complaining and bellyaching? When the troubles and the turmoil of this life start to mount against us, are we going into our closets and praying more? Or are we stamping our feet and having temper tantrums when one more thing piles on? When... Those people continually come at you and attack you and cross you and say things against you and laugh at you and mock you and make fun of you. Are you remembering what Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 5? Or are you firing back under your own power? For you see, when we do these things, we arm our enemy. We give him the tools and the weaponry 
that he needs to destroy us. Because you know as well as I do, we start to complain and he'll give us more things to complain about. We start to moan and groan about the people in our lives. And guess what? He'll bring more and more people into your lives to help you to moan and groan more. We read something in Matthew 5 today where Jesus kept going on and on and on. And he was saying, blessed are you. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Not when you're rich. Not when you're living in a palace. Not when you're known all throughout the world, but blessed are you when you're poor. Blessed are you when you're weak. Blessed are you when people mock you. Blessed are you when you're going through trials. Paul even said it. We said it in Sunday school this morning. Paul said it. Rejoice during these times. Be happy. Be excited during these times. But we fail to realize that it's during these times that God's Best blessings are coming our way. Somebody say amen. We don't want to fight for our blessings. We don't want to have to be strong for our blessings. We don't want to have to remain true to our blessings. We want God to just hand things to us. And you see, when we are in a place like that and where we want, you know, not to do anything, again, Satan becomes stronger. Satan becomes a little more intelligent. Somebody say amen. In our own minds and in our own eyes. I know we've all faced it. Somebody come against you out of the blue. Somebody attack you out of the blue. Somebody abandon you out of the blue. Somebody say something negative against you out of the blue. And oftentimes during these times we are taken off guard. Somebody say amen. How many of you know, saints of God, that you and I are to be instant in all seasons? We're to be ready in all seasons. We're to be prepared in all seasons. And if we're not prepared for the trials that are coming our way, we arm our enemy even more. Somebody say amen. When he is able to catch God's children off guard, we arm him even more. Some people might say, Pastor, there are things that have happened to me that there was no way possible that I would be able to know that it was coming. I read somewhere in my Bible where it says, you and I should be aware of Satan's devices. Can I I change that into modern English? You and I should be knowledgeable. You and I should be on guard. You and I should be prepared. You and I should be looking for. How many of you believe that? On any given day, as God's children, you and I should be looking for the enemy to attack. You and I should be prepared, waiting for the enemy attack. Some of you might say, Pastor, how is it possible to enjoy life if you're always on guard? Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to be on guard. And something I've learned over the years, you can still enjoy your relationship with God and still keep your eye on the enemy at all times. You can always have your eye open watching what the enemy is going to do or what he's about to do. Somebody say amen. Saints, over the years I have watched people and you can focus in on people and over time you get to learn people. Somebody say amen. You can tell when they're about to do something. Amen. And guess what? You and I are fools if we haven't learned our enemy yet that we know when he's about to attack. Amen. You know how I know when the enemy's going to attack? When I feel good in my spirit. When I'm sitting in the sanctuary and every song sung moves me to prayer, moves me to praise. I can feel the spirit down in my soul. I know the enemy is about to attack. Why is the enemy about to attack me during that time? He doesn't want me to get lost in my praise. Amen. He doesn't want me to feel the Lord's presence. He doesn't want me to know that God is alive and well in my soul. So sure he is going to attack. So what do we do during those times? You know, we can arm him even more and just sit there saying, you know, if I start to praise the Lord, the enemy is going to attack or... 
you can raise your hands and start to praise the Lord anyway. Somebody say amen. Because you know he's going to attack anyway. And what's a great way to defeat your enemy other than raising your hands during one of your toughest trials and saying, God, you are still God. God, you are still worthy of my praise. God, you are still meeting all of my needs. Amen. That's how you defeat your enemy, saints of God. Amen. That's how you strip him of his weaponry that he uses against you. When those thoughts come into your mind, ignore them. Put them out of your mind. Amen. When the enemy brings things up from your past, don't sit and dwell on them. Run to God. Call out God's name. Plead the blood of Jesus over your mind. Take the time to renew your mind that day. Make it new. Remind your mind of who you serve. Somebody say amen. amen. For when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe. You believe Satan guards what he thinks is his? You've heard me say this before. When somebody gets saved, the enemy might leave him alone for a while. But the enemy wants back what he thinks is his. Hey, can I say this? I've learned this. You can be saved well over 25 years, and the enemy still thinks you're his. Oh, i got to say that again. You can be saved well over 25 years, and the enemy still thinks you're his. He doesn't stop. you got to give him a gold star for not giving up, amen, because he still comes after you because he thinks you're his. And he thinks those things that made you fall years ago, those things will make you fall today. Amen. He'll remind you of the things that tripped you up before, and he'll bring them into your path every single time, thinking that they're going to trip you up and he can get you back. When we go to speak to a sinner person, when we go to pray for someone, when we go to, you know, Share the gospel like we learned about in Sunday school class this morning. Guess what? The enemy's going to jump up. The enemy's going to mount some sort of attack. The enemy's not going to be quiet. The enemy's going to go at us. Amen. But this scripture verse goes on to say, until. Look at somebody and say, until. I'm reminded of Acts 2 that they went into the upper room and they prayed, until. I like that. Verse 22 starts off by saying, until someone stronger attacks and overpowers him. Now, this is the NLT. Hey, man, thank God for it, because in the KJV, we probably wouldn't fully get the meaning here on this one, but it says, until someone even stronger. Can I ask you, is that me and you? Is it me and you? You and I by ourselves, are we strong enough? Aren't you glad about that? I am. I really am. But somebody here said it. If somebody's in you, if the person speaking is say, who's saying this is in us, then until someone stronger. How many of you believe this morning and Satan knows that Jesus is stronger? Amen. How many of you think this morning that Jesus or that Satan believes that you and I are stronger if we have Jesus within us? Amen. So let me point this out just for a moment, maybe just for me this morning. So the more Jesus I get in me, the more Jesus that comes out of me. The more Jesus, like what we read in Isaiah 60, the more he reflects off of me. The more I intimidate my enemy. The more I agitate my enemy. The more I make afraid my enemy. Somebody say amen. It says, if until someone even stronger, not only stronger, but he goes on to say until they do something actionable, until they start attacking Satan. 
I was told a lot growing up, don't pick a fight with the enemy. Anybody ever heard that before? Don't tempt the enemy. Don't mess with the enemy. Don't try to bully the enemy. Well, it took me a while to figure out that the people saying that were wimps. Right? Because, again, you've heard me say this before. Growing up where we grew up, you had to attack a bully from time to time. Because if you didn't attack a bully from time to time, you were always getting bullied. You were always getting beat up. You were always getting picked on. Somebody say amen. And this enemy that we're talking about here, this strong man Satan, if we're not stronger than him, if we never become stronger than him, if we don't ever take the fight to him, then he's always bullying us. He's always reminding us that he's stronger than us. And you know what one of the saddest things in the world is? Is a child of God that allows themselves to be bullied by the enemy every single day that they walk with the Lord. Amen. We allow ourselves sometimes, saints of God, to be bullied by the enemy. This crisis happens, this person says this, this goes on, and we just sit and cry, and we sit and moan, and we sit and groan about all the things that are going wrong in our lives. Mm. When Jesus knew that he was going to the cross, did he just sit and cry and moan and groan? He went to his father and he prayed and he begged and he pleaded, Lord, please take this cup from me. I don't want to do this. This is heavy. This is crazy. Saints, there's nothing wrong with asking the Lord to take something off of you. But know this, if you're willing to ask for him to take it off and he says no, be prepared to follow through. Amen. And I'm going to tell you there are times when you go to the Lord asking him to take things off of you and he doesn't. Guess what? You had better be prepared to follow through. Somebody say amen. amen. For when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his place, his possessions are safe until someone even stronger attacks, not only attacks, but overpowers him. Mm. Let me just think about that for a second. Not only attack, but overpower him. Say it again. Not only attacks, but overpowers him. Amen. You and I have it in us today to overpower our enemy. Oh, we do. One or two of us do. We have it in us today, saints of God, to overcome, to overpower our enemy. Not only attack him, not only take the fight to him, but overpower him. Mm. Does anybody hear this this morning? Does anybody believe this this morning? Not only can you attack your enemy, but you can overpower your enemy. You can best your enemy. You can make your enemy begin to retreat. I don't believe the scripture would say this if it weren't possible. Yes, it was Jesus referring to himself, but the Bible says that if you and I have Jesus down inside of us, if we have that Holy Ghost that fell in Acts chapter 2, then you know the disciples went on and proved to us that they were more than capable of doing the things that Jesus did. So yeah, they can not only attack Satan, but they can overpower him, and it doesn't stop there. overpowers him and then strips him? Render the enemy ineffective? Strips him of his weapons? Now remember, the Bible says that Satan walks about to and fro in the earth. What does he do? He's looking for you. Amen. He's looking for you. Now, if you're feeling strong, if you just receive something from the Lord and you're like, mm hmm, I'm going to leave that one alone. Right? I'm looking for the one that just lost something, someone that just got 
hurt, someone that just got whatever, and I'm going to find them. And if I find them, I'm going to zero in on them. And if I zero in on them, all the stuff they give me and tell me, I'm going to use it to destroy them. Help me. But we can overpower them and we can strip them of those things. I said this a while back preaching here, Steve, I believe. If when we're going through a trial and if we don't really have anything good to say, if we would just stay quiet, the trial might get over with a whole lot faster. If we would just stay quiet, sometimes I believe the trial would get over with a whole lot faster. But if Donna's doing her thing and we go home and we're talking about Donna to everybody... Or we're talking about Lorena. She's doing her thing. We go home and we talk about Lorena to everybody. Then not only does Lorena have me as her enemy and Donna has me as her enemy, but now they've got a few more people that are their enemy. And what have we done to the situation? We've made it worse. But the best thing to do would either be quiet, or the true best thing to do would be to go to the Father and pray. You know what came to mind to me today? Every time Jesus went away for a long prayer, there was a major victory when he was done praying. Can I say that again? Every time Jesus was at a place, and I'm just going to talk like Wayne today, every time Jesus was at a place where he was about to pull his hair out and he said, guys, i got to go and pray. Leave me alone for a minute. i got to pray. Every time he came back out, there was a major victory that took place. Somebody say amen. Somebody had a demon cast out. Somebody was healed. Something, ha- something major happened every time Jesus went and prayed. And can I tell you what I've learned about praying? Praying will help you have the power to strip your enemy of the weapons he has against you. Somebody say amen. When you're standing on the boat and the sea is going crazy and the boat's rocking, what's the best thing to do? And I believe Jesus taught us. You remain calm. Somebody say amen. You say a prayer and you call out to the name of Jesus. And guess what? Even though the boat is rocking... Mm. somebody greater is on board with you amen and all he has to do is speak a word say a word say a phrase does Jesus have that kind of power today saints of God through whatever rocky storm that you're going through can Jesus just simply speak a word and everything be done away with that quickly can Jesus speak a word and send the enemy running amen Yes, he can. So you and I can not only overpower him, but we can strip him of his weapons. And it doesn't stop there. This is where we should really get excited. We can attack him. We can overpower him. We can strip him of his weapons. And. Look at somebody and say and. Now some people say and doesn't mean anything. It does to you. Because not only did you whip your enemy, not only did you overpower him, not only did you take away his weapons, but you get to take what's his. How many of you like that this morning? You get to take what's his. Jesus took what's his. Jesus not only died on the cross for you and I, not only did he raise from the dead, but he went into Satan's house. That's cool stuff, man. You know how you know when you're whipping a bully? When you walk into their house. <laughs> you walk into a bully's house and you tell his whole family, I'm in charge now. I'm your daddy today. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. Yeah. We laugh and that sounds good because that, that yeah, we want to do that from time to time. Jesus actually did that. Do you realize that? Not only did he overpower Satan, but he stripped him of his weapons. And then he went to his house and says, I'm dead today. And can I tell you something? When you walk into somebody's house 
and you tell the whole family that you're dead, you better have some power to back it up. Somebody say amen. Because at that point, you're not only fighting one, you're fighting the whole clan. Jesus had no problem with that because he knew who he was. Satan had no problem with that because he knew who he was. My father-in-law could probably preach this better than me, and I wish he was here to do this part. Because I could see him dancing and kicking his legs at this point. Walk up to Satan and say, it's mine. Give him here. I own it. Next time you want to say or do anything, you got to check with me. Now, Pastor, these are great stories to read about in Scripture. And can I tell you about Scriptures? They are great stories to read about. And if you don't apply them to your life, then they become fairy tales. It just becomes something that you read from time to time. But can I tell you what we just read there in Luke? If we back up to Isaiah 49, we will read that it's prophetic. Did I say that? It's prophetic. It was something that was foretold. It was something that was told years and years before Jesus actually did it. It was foretold. And Jesus went on to say that the things I do, you can do. It was foretold. Isaiah chapter 49, beginning at 24, says this. Who can snatch the plunder of war from the hands of a warrior? Who can demand that a tyrant let his captives go? But the Lord says the captives of warriors will be released. Somebody say amen. And the plunder of tyrants will be retrieved. For I will fight those who fight you. And I will save your children. Somebody say amen. I will feed your enemies their own flesh. Amen. They will be drunk with rivers of their own blood. And the world will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. So what Jesus was doing there when he was casting out the demons was foretold. And Jesus stood there and told him, look, I'm not doing this by myself. And saints, whenever you're going through it, remind yourself, I am not doing this by myself. For when we forget that we're standing there with somebody far greater than us, for when we forget that we have somebody in us that has already proven that he can overpower our enemy, then we are sure to lose. But if when we're going through the toughest of tough trials, even not even the toughest of tough trials, and we remind ourselves that we have Jesus down inside of us, if we can remind ourselves of Luke chapter 11 and Isaiah, guess what? We'll tell ourselves, I can overcome this enemy. And I can not only overcome this enemy, but I can strip him of the weapons that he uses against me. Does anybody believe that this morning? You and I have that capability. You and I have that power. We have that strength. Don't allow the trials of this life to make you forget that. Steve said it a while ago. Sometimes through your deepest, darkest trials, no matter how many years you've been saved or how long you've been preaching, sometimes you forget Sometimes you go into the depressed state. Amen. A child of God in a depressed state? Think about that. Does it happen? Yes, it happens. How do you come up out of that depressed state? You remember who you are. Saints, that's what it's all about. Remembering who you are. Remembering what your God is capable of doing. Will you stand with me, please? Don't worry about Wade if he, there he is, okay. <laughs> you listen to me for a moment. Our enemy is real. He's legit. And he attacks. 
whenever we allow him to. And sometimes even when he just simply wants to. You have a couple choices. You can hand him the weaponry that he uses to defeat you. And we do that. We can tell him the things he needs to know to defeat us. Or we can remember scriptures. Or we can remember what the word says. Or we can remember that we're children of the Most High God. Or we can remember that Jesus is within us. Or we can remember that we were once saved and that we were once filled up with the Holy Ghost. And we can remember what happens to people that have the Spirit of God dwelling, working on them. We can remember those things. Saints, listen. This is what God is wanting some of you to do this morning. Remember who you are. Forget your enemy. He's defeated. Jesus did it for you. He's already whipped. It's over with. The Bible tells that he's whipped. The Bible tells what's going to take place. The Bible tells where he's going to spend eternity. The Bible tells that. How irritating must that be to know a word that comes from God that you try to refute and argue with, but you know that one day it's going to take place. Satan knows that one day it's going to take place. Do you know your enemies are defeated? Do you know he's under your feet? Do you know that he has no power over you? Do you know that the one we serve has given you and I the ability to overpower him? Do you know that? Do you believe that? Are you excited about that? Or, thank you, or have you heard it so much you ignore it? You guys have heard the word so much that you can probably quote most of what the preacher is going to say. How many of you allow that to take away the weight and the meaning of what's being said? Regardless of how many times you heard it, it's still true. That moment, that time, that instance when you really grab a hold of it and realize that it applies to you during the situation that you're dealing with now, that's when you get excited about it. That's when you get excited about it. Emily had a song playing in her room this morning. I don't know who the band was, but one of the words that kept coming through the song was pursue to pursue, and it was, I think, to see it was pursuing God. Here's what I believe the Lord wants us to do this morning in our altar call, if you're not in a hurry. Forget about your enemy for a moment. Forget about your trials. Forget about your aches and pains. Forget about whatever and pursue God for a moment. Pursue the one who has already defeated your enemy. enemy. Pursue the one who has given you the strength and the ability to defeat the enemy yourself. Steve from time to time calls you guys up here in the altar during praise and worship and says, go ahead and worship him. Raise your hands if you want to. And sometimes we do that and sometimes we don't. I get it. Sometimes we don't want to. Sometimes we don't feel like it. Sometimes we're not even paying attention to it. Can I ask you to do yourself a favor for a moment? Pay attention to it. Amen. Who in here has had the enemy attack you this week? Raise your hand. Looky there. So maybe the Lord gave me this message for all those hands that went up today. What do you think? Maybe the Lord wanted you to know that you have the ability to attack your enemy this morning. And how do you attack your enemy this morning? Oh, 
in the middle of your struggle, in the middle of your trouble, in the middle of your trial, raise your hands up and begin to praise your God. Not just a little bit. When Lori had you all clapping your hands before, I noticed you went on clapping and clapping and clapping and clap. Pastor, I don't feel like clapping my hands today. You know what? It's a perfect time. Me and my boys were sitting last night and we were reading some scripture verses. And one of my favorite stories in the Bible was those lepers who were sitting there and they had nothing. They were hungry. They were starving. And one of them made the comments like, eh, if we stay here, we're going to die. If we go back to the army, they might kill us. Either way, we've lost nothing. The Bible tells us, and we can read it, but you know they didn't know it. God had already intervened on their behalf. And even though they felt in despair, even though they felt as if there was no answer to their problem, they got up and they went in. And I like the way my Bible reads it. They went from tent to tent and they got their bellies full. Somebody say amen. And they took whatever they wanted. Why? Because the good Lord spoke to the enemy. Just put a thought in the enemy's mind and the enemy got scared and ran off. How much fighting did those lepers have to do Zero. How much fighting do you have to do today? Zero. Your fight is spiritual. When you're standing there with your hands raised, Robert, and you're praising the Lord, something's going on in the spiritual realm. You're attacking your enemy when you're praising God through your trial. Do you realize that? You're attacking your enemy when you're praising God through your trial. And if you praise him loud enough and hard enough, you will overpower him. You will render him ineffective. He will run off. If you're not saved this morning, these altars are open. Please come. If you have someone around you that's not saved or you think they're not, ask them. Bring them. Here's what I want you to do. Those of you that are saved and you're just struggling, you're just battling. Will you come and stand in the altars? Raise your hands up in total surrender and just praise your Lord with all you have. Listen, don't let the musicians and the singers do your praising for you. Open your mouth and begin to praise your God. Would you do that, please? Praise your way out of this struggle. Praise your way out of this pain. Praise your way out of this valley. Praise your way to defeating your enemy. Would you do that? Praise him with everything that you have. Sing this song with them. Sing it. Death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praise. Come on and shout now. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Cause the enemy's been defeated and death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praise to the enemy. The enemy's been defeated. Oh, and I know death couldn't hold you. Well, we're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praise. Oh, come on and shout. Shout up to God. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with the voice of trium
lift your name up. Come on, shout unto God with the voice. Shout unto God with the voice. Come on now. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto your name up. We lift your name up. Come on and shout this morning. Oh, let's worship him this morning. Our God is able. Bless his holy name. Because the enemy's defeated. Come on. The enemy's been defeated. Oh, and death couldn't hold you. Lift our voice and victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We'll lift our voice and victory. We're going to make your praises loud. Shout out to God with the voice of Hallelujah, hallelujah. The enemy's been defeated, and death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated, oh, and death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your Oh, come on and shout. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with oh I said. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Holy name, glory, glory, glory. Well, I'm a little tired of the devil's games. He's keeping me in bondage through my trouble and pain. I can live better. I won't go another day. I'm here to claim deliverance in Jesus' name. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. Well, he's all over me. Oh, come on now. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. He's all over me.
folks have been coming pretty regular lately. He's in the hospital this morning, and he needs prayer. I'll just have Norman stand in for him. Brother Jack, come on up here. With Norman standing for Charles and Joan standing in for Paula. And if there's anybody else that needs special prayer right now, it'd be a great time to just come up here and line yourself in here. And just let us anoint you and pray over you. Can we do that this morning? Give me a hand. Exciting news, actually. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, you guys know that Jennifer was sick and possible aneurysm in her brain, but it came back that it could have even just been a vascular band on the picture. So it just looked like it was an aneurysm, but it's so small that it's nothing you need to worry about. Five percent of the world walks around with the same size and doesn't even know it for their whole life. So I just want to praise God and thank you guys for all your prayers for everything you did for her. What's amazing about that story? God used a, a faulty medical image to get her in church. Amen. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Now, that goes to show you how awesome God is. It could have been a full-on aneurysm right there. And then God shrinks it down to nothing, minimal, zero. And I prefer to believe the latter. Amen. But regardless, God is God. He knew how to get her. He knew how to grab a hold of her and the fact that he stood up and gave that testimony this morning. Saints, God is real. He is more than real. He's alive. He's alive this morning. Amen. That made my day. Amen. That made my day. Amen. I love those testimonies. Praise God. God is so awesome, isn't he? God is so awesome.
Mike's standing in for his boss. Come over here, guys, and get, gather, around him, gather around him. He's got cancer. Come back for the third time. Let's pray for him. Can you do what's his name? Pray for Rick, okay? Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. God, we lift Rick up before you. God, you're the God over cancer, God. You control cancer, God. You're in charge of cancer, Lord. Move, God, upon this need. Right now, I pray, Lord, move upon this need. Heal it, great God, and let him know you did it, Lord. Let him know you did it. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Ladies, we got Sister Bev up here, Hoffman, in the, in the altar. And she's a mom, and her son just lost both of his in-laws this week. That's what the funeral was for yesterday. She needs strength. She needs power from the Lord. She needs the ability to remain strong during this, to help her son and her, da her daughter-in-law. Would you just love on her and pray over her right now, please? Look over here. I don't know if you saw Lori's text that went out the other day. His mom, 83, 83 years of age, had to go through gallbladder surgery, and the physicians didn't really give her a whole lot of hope. 20 minutes into the surgery, it was all done, and they were amazed at how well it went. So God knows what he's doing again. Amen. God can heal aneurysms and gallbladders. Amen. All of the above. Amen. How about we just praise our way out of here today? Can we do that? Let's just say a simple thank you to the Lord for this service and just go up and hug somebody's neck, tell them how awesome God is. Amen. Father, we are so thankful for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Oh, happy day. Oh, uh -huh.